What if the reason you experience doubt, uncertainty, a lack of clarity, incoherence on your spiritual journey is not because of psychic interference or because you're on the wrong path, but actually because you're dreaming too small? Allow me to explain. Hello luminous beings, welcome back to Temple of Akasha. My name is Natasha and this is the home of embodied spirituality. Before we dive into today's video, I'd like to make a few announcements. The doors to the Priestess Society are now open. This is an online portal where we are really immersing ourselves in Eros, sacred union, devotional feminine arts, wealth cultivation, both materially and energetically, and a real focus on sacred service. This is a portal that I've co-created with a dear sister of mine, Hannah Ashtara, and we have felt this burgeoning call to create containment and ongoing support for women who are here to work with the priestess architecture, who are here to be oracles, wisdom keepers, and architects for the new earth. This container is deep. We go deep in the work that we do. This is for the women that really feel called to a devotional path. So if this is something that speaks to you, if you're looking for more containment on your path, of unfurling, of unfolding, of really understanding your feminine nature and wisdom. All the information you need is in the description box below. My next in-person experience, Sing Your Soul's Song, is now live on my website. This is a two-hour experience to really dive into unlocking the voice, opening the heart, and really bathing in the vibration of the soul. We are going to be journeying with medicine songs, mantra, vocal exploration, instruments, as well as journeying with the deep medicine of Mother Cacao to really support the de-armoring of the heart center and really coming into a space of authentic expression. So if this is something that appeals to you to come into a singing circle, to feel the upliftment that comes when we sing and gather in community, this event is happening on Saturday the 23rd of November, 2 p.m. till 4 p.m. in Milton Keynes. The link for that is in the description box below. If you're interested in joining me on retreat next year, I've got two provisional retreats planned, one in India and one in the south of France. If you'd like to find out more when those go live, please join the waitlist. It really helps me to gauge the numbers and to know how to proceed with those offerings. The link for that is in the description box below. And finally, if you're looking for more bespoke support on your journey, I have a limited number of one-to-one -one spots available for my sacred soul support sessions in November. The calendar for November is now open and you can book using the link in the description box below. And if you're not already subscribed, I invite you to subscribe and join the burgeoning community here at Temple of Akasha on YouTube. Okay, let's dive into today's video. Your soul came here for greatness. And this greatness I'm speaking about is not a greatness for your own egoic gratification. It's not a greatness to build yourself up in stature, to inflate your sense of self in a way that's superficial. The greatness I'm speaking to in this video is the greatness that comes when we are answering the soul's call to pursue our dharma, to pursue our destiny, to actualize our full potential, to liberate ourselves from the conditions on earth that have been for so long entrenched in the frequency of enslavement, lack and fear. The greatness that comes when we are supporting not only our own liberation, but the liberation of our ancestors, our lineages and collective consciousness. The greatness that comes when we are vibrating in joy and love, truth, wisdom and union. This greatness can't be measured in earthly terms. It's a greatness that is felt within the depths of our being. And this is the greatness that your soul is hungry for. It is the hunger to truly become all that you came here to be, to allow the seeds planted within your heart that God seeded within you to come into full fruition, to cultivate those seeds so that they can bear fruit in the world, so that you can contribute to the all in a way that's truly impactful, in a way that truly serves the all, and also really serves your individual desire to create and expand as a soul. And I invite you to consider 
that the reason you tend to experience a sense of stagnation and this sense of despondency, of confusion, a lack of clarity, feeling misaligned or in some way not in congruence with the depth of what you desire is because you are denying the truth. You are denying the truth of your soul's desire for greatness. You are denying the truth of your dharma and how it wishes to actualize. You are denying the vision that you have for yourself, for your life, for this incarnation, what you wish to grow in, how you wish to expand, how you wish to come into greater states of empowerment and sovereignty. What occurred to me yesterday when I was in a gu journey guided by Hannah from the Priestess Society, when she was guiding part of the ceremony, I came into a profound realization myself that we are often dreaming too small. We are often shrinking the vision, the desire, the goal, the dream, the dharmic destiny that has been implanted as a gnosis within us and we are trying to in some way conform or contort ourselves to fit into a standard or an expectation maybe of our families, of our societies, our communities, of what this fear-based matrix expects of us. And when we're doing that, because we are not aligning with truth, we're always going to feel a sense of misalignment. We're always going to feel this sense of incongruence. We're always going to feel a sense that there is disharmony, that we are not quite in the flow, so to speak, because we are not ultimately following the current of creation and how it wishes to guide our process, how it wishes to express through us. This realization unlocked something big for me in our ceremony yesterday. And this is why I love doing this work, because when we dedicate ourselves to being the conduits for divine wisdom, grace, holding truth, it is not the mind orchestrating these experiences. It is really allowing the heart to lead the way. And when we do that, we as facilitators receive as much as we give. And that was very much the case for me yesterday. I came into a profound recognition of my unique path and how I'm here to serve the unique people I'm here to serve. It was a realization that occurred to me when I was in Thailand back in the spring that I am here to really be in a role of leadership. I'm really here to be in a role of leadership, but not just leading others in a general way, but I'm actually here to lead the leaders and the pioneers of the new earth. I'm here to lead the people that are ready to actualize their dharma. I'm here to lead the people that are as intent on self-mastery and union with the divine as I am. I'm here to lead the ones that are very dedicated to this process. And that's not for everyone. That's not going to be everyone's path. That's not going to appeal to everyone. But it was so clarifying yesterday in our ceremony when Hannah was guiding us through this journey and I allowed myself to become immersed in the current of creation during this beautiful feminine journey we were on where I realized that what my soul is hungry for is this expansion that for the last six months I've been denying and shrinking from because it requires me to embody levels of power, leadership, responsibility, purpose, vision in ways that I haven't experienced in this life before. It's a true up-leveling. It feels both incredibly natural and it also feels like a very big growth spurt that I'm going through. One that is going to require me to move beyond the confines of what's comfortable and known to me. And as I was feeling into this, that yes, this is what I'm here to do. I'm here to be in a role of heart-led, integrity-focused leadership. That's what I care about. I care about empowerment. I care about the systems, organizations, groups, and experiences on earth being led from a place of integrity and truth and justice that's really serving the all. And I've been grateful, privileged to have had enough experiences in my life where I've been in leadership roles and I've really understood the architecture of heart-led leadership not hierarchical leadership, but leading from humility. 
leading from a sense of service. And this is what I feel the earth really needs. More empowered leaders, more empowered pioneers, more empowered creators who are really leading from this space and not from a need for power, control, domination, superiority, etc. This is all the old egoic architecture. If we are to really birth the new earth, what's needed is individuals that are really anchored in both their heart's vision and also a recognition of the fact that they are serving the all in all that they do. So it's straddling service to self and service to other. And the imagery that emerged to encapsulate this process when we've outgrown a frequency, when we've outgrown a way of being, a way of embodying, is akin to being in clothes that are two sizes too small. Those clothes are familiar, they're comfortable, you know, they're, we've had them for a long time, we're very used to them. And so we get attached. We get attached to that sense of familiarity. We get attached to that sense of comfortability. But as we grow and expand, the clothes start to choke us. They start to constrict us. They start to become limiting. They feel too tight. And they are in some way shrinking our capacity to feel truly expressed, free in our experience. So why do we still hold on to these old clothes, to this old frequency? It's because whenever we are reaching a stage of initiation where we are moving from the old to the new, generally a lot of fear-based conditioning arises. We are met with the doubt, the fear, the shame, the guilt, the unworthiness, the not enoughness. All of these core wounds start to emerge just as we're on the threshold of great change for ourselves. And if we are not vigilant of this, we could mistake these doubts and fears as a sign that we are on the wrong path, as though we are making decisions that aren't really what we want to do. We might start identifying with that fear-based conditioning instead of listening to the deeper evolutionary nature of the soul, which is always wanting to pioneer, grow, expand, create in new ways, and therefore is always going to be encouraging us to move out of familiar, comfortable territory. We have to get used to the fear-based conditioning arising and not being dominated by it, not being governed by it, not allowing the fear-based conditioning to determine how we move forwards. It's likely always going to be there, but we have to make the decision to keep going towards what feels truly alive, joyous, passion-filled, and inspired for us at a soul level regardless. The quote that comes to mind in this context is, courage is not the absence of fear, it is acting in spite of the fear. And I feel that this is very much the case when we are up leveling, when we are choosing to shed the old clothes, when we are choosing to let go of a familiar frequency, when it's really time to shed those old clothes, when it's time to let go and to really allow ourselves to feel the freedom, the ease, the comfortability of wearing clothes that actually fit us, of moving into a frequency that's befitting of our evolutionary journey, of moving into a frequency that is befitting of our refinement, of our levels of self-mastery, of our desires, of our levels of joy and love that we came to experience, that is befitting to the level of inner work and integration we've done. There is always dynamism and movement when it comes to the soul's growth, when it comes to Shakti evolving. And so there is always this sense that we will be shedding, we will be releasing, we will be letting go, and we will always be rebirthing and moving into something new. And what happens when we finally acknowledge this new frequency, this new outfit that we're being invited to adorn, this new embodiment, and actually it's not really new, it's just more of our allness, but it feels new. It feels new to the part of us that's been living from conditioning. When we finally accept this elevated, exalted vantage point that we can live from, move from, work from, create from, it actually creates a tremendous amount of clarity, coherence, congruence, because we're no longer resisting the truth. 
if the vision has always been for you to evolve, to grow, to learn, to expand as a soul, and you're denying that process by clinging to what's familiar and comfortable, no wonder there's going to be a sense of misalignment, a sense of disharmony, a sense that you are meeting resistance on your path because you are denying and resisting evolution. You are denying and resisting that which is so natural to all of creation. And so, of course, when we take the time to tune in and feel into our soul's highest truth in this moment, what it is asking us to actualize, what part of our dharmic path it's asking us to integrate, to step into, there is going to be a natural sense of coherence in that when we really allow ourselves to stop resisting that call and actually recognize that this is just another aspect of the all we're being asked to integrate, another aspect of truth that we're being asked to embody and live from and move from and create from. This is evolution in motion. This is the soul on its journey of self-mastery coming into states of actualization. This is how the soul ultimately orientates us towards greatness. This is how the soul orientates us towards greatness. It is a recognition that this journey is always leading us towards greatness. It is always leading us to fulfill our potential. It is always guiding us towards a more loving way. It is always guiding us towards more joy, more coherence, more harmony, greater union with the divine, because that's end game. Union is the end game. Fusion, the fusion of Shakti and Shiva is the end game. So we are always being encouraged by this evolutionary process to move towards that which feels expansive, loving, inspiring, creatively rich for us, juicy, pleasurable, luxurious. And that doesn't even need to be with regards to our material experience. It's just this luxuriating frequency within our being that feels so rich, so delicious. This is what the soul's natural inclination is. It is the conditioning and it is an untamed mind that will have us believe otherwise. So I invite you to consider today that perhaps the reason you've struggled to really feel your way forwards on your spiritual path is not because you're doing something wrong, it's not because you're having lots of interference, it's actually because you're not being honest about your soul's vision, desires, dreams, goals, aspirations, and dharmic path in this life. Really, this comes down to the truth, as I speak about so much on this channel, because that's what the Kundalini has really schooled me in, the recognition that we've come here to honour the highest truth of our being. We've come here to honour the truth that God, Goddess, is communicating through us and to us at all times. The truth of love, the truth of union, the truth of wisdom, the truth of justice, the truth of harmony, the truth of our natural, organic, coherent state, when we're not living from fallen architecture and fear-based conditioning. And so there is this invitation now to consider where in your life you might actually be dreaming too small, where you may be capping your ability to dream and vision, where you may be consciously or unconsciously limiting your capacity to feel into what your soul desires because you're being loyal to the conditioning or the expectations of others, instead of allowing yourself to be honest, honest about what you truly deeply want and how you're truly here to serve the all. You came here for greatness. You didn't just incarnate at this monumental time in, in humanity's evolution, at the end of a dying epoch, when we are at the inception point of a new trajectory for planet Earth and humanity. You didn't just incarnate here by chance. You didn't just incarnate into the lineages that you've incarnated into, into the ancestral and karmic conditioning that you've come into clear. You didn't just incarnate into this physical form or the location you're in just for the fun of it. There were lessons for you to learn. You had a task. You didn't just incarnate into this individuation with this particular set of gifts and wisdom for no reason. Your soul has chosen these conditions so that you can contribute to the all as well as your own evolution. When you start to orientate yourself towards the greatness that your soul wants for you and what God Goddess wants for you, 
you start to become the lineage liberator that you came here to be. You become the creator and the pioneer that perhaps your ancestors didn't have the opportunity to be. You are now standing on their shoulders. You have this opportunity at this time on earth with these contrasting conditions, with so much polarity, with so much contrast, to actually come into a space of better discernment about what's right for you, what's the loving way for you, what's the true way for you, what's a way that truly really inspires the soul. It can feel like agony existing in this fallen architecture, in this fear-based matrix, if we are trying to contort ourselves to fit into it. But our souls didn't come here to do that. We came here to liberate ourselves and as many others as possible from this matrix to elevate ourselves beyond this fallen architecture. This harvesting system, this extraction system based on harvesting and extracting energy and life force and keeping us plugged into this never ending wheel of samsara where we do not actualize our potential, where we never awaken, where we're constantly on the karmic wheel. We have come to recognize that the planet's been hijacked for a long time by forces that don't have humanity's best interests at heart, for beings that have themselves been severed from God's wisdom and love. And our task as beings with awareness, as beings with hearts that really beat for love and union, is to recognize that we haven't come here to fit in. We've come here to pioneer a path that hasn't even been established yet. And that's our duty. That's why we came in at this time. We came for the pioneering path. There'll be people that do not understand that path. The system that's currently in place will be at odds with that path. And our task is to be so orientated towards greatness, the actualization of our dharma, our destiny, and the liberation of all, so that we no longer give any mind or attention to the expectations of others, to the standards of a sick society. We have come here for creation, for liberation, for empowerment, for sovereignty. And it's time now to claim what you came here to do and all that you came here to be. I hope this exploration has inspired you to consider where you might be dreaming too small, whether that's in your relationships, in your work, in creative projects, in ways you express yourself, in your belief systems, in your habits. I invite you to really lean into where you may have been shrinking or trying to in some way deviate from the truth because maybe the truth is scary. Maybe your soul's vision for you is bigger than you thought is possible. Maybe you came here to make big impact, whether that's on the global stage or in your own family or in your community or just within your own being. There is no singular definition of greatness. Greatness is dependent on where each soul is on their journey, what they came in to learn, to clear, to expand into, to contribute to the all. And so I really invite you to lean into what your definition of greatness is, what success feels like at a soul level for you, what really inspires you, what moves you and motivates you from a place of love and inspiration and creation and joy and passion. Because when you are moving from that state of consciousness, you are sowing seeds of love and inspiration and creation. And the fruits that are harvested are also going to be of that vibration, which is much more beneficial to the all than moving from fear. And we are in these times now where the actualization of our dharma, of our highest potential, is not just a fanciful thing. It's not just something that we can consider at a fantastical level. It's actually very important for the evolution of humanity that we allow ourselves to finally rise and step into the vantage points and vibrations that we came here to anchor and to no longer shrink or deny or hold back on that dharmic vision and destiny. This is really the time to go all in on planet Earth. We're at the end of a dying epoch, as I've already said. We are in the end times, the end times of a dissolving paradigm. We are in the end times of a fear-based matrix in disillusion. This is the fall of Rome at a global scale happening in real time. And we get to decide what world emerges in its place. This is the invitation for all of us to recognize and actualize our greatness so that we can all from a place of empowerment and liberation contribute to greatness at a collective level. I'm sending you so much love. I hope this video inspired you. I hope it invited you to inquire. 
I hope it invited you to dream, to vision, to get really curious about what's real and true for you. And I'm so blessed and grateful to be with this community. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that watches these videos, shares them, likes them, comments. I try my best to read every comment, even if I don't always respond. I look at them all. I'm grateful for your presence here. And I really look forward to connecting with you again in the next video. If you're not already subscribed and you enjoyed this content, please subscribe. It helps the algorithm pick up this channel and show it to the people that would really benefit from it.